welcome. This is Pastor Deborah, and this is Mental Health and the Forever Person webcam. This is a new series for Pastor Deborah, and it will also become a podcast on the Mental Health Radio News Network. But I'm just going to have a little introduction for you that you will see, and then I'll get into the teaching. Mental health, as you can see, and the forever person. These two are connected, and this is going to be a series of webcams podcast entitled One Plus One Plus One Equals One. It's a new math, and it's a strange math, but I'm going to talk about this for several series episodes so that you will be able to see at a little deeper level who you are, who others are, what mental health is to this system of three that are one, and what the forever person is to the system of mental health and this strange new math. So enjoy. Hello again. Hey. This is Pastor Deborah. This is Agape Love, Love is Here. This is the Mental Health and the Forever Person webcam and podcast. This is episode two of your new math that we're learning. The new math that we are learning, whoops, I'm sorry, uh, yes, some more are coming in, many students, okay, wonderful. Oh, just met some wonderful young people at the flea market today, and they didn't understand what spirit language was. They had never heard pine cones talking, and they all came in and wanted to know. So, yes, you're all welcome. Oh, here comes my psychiatrist from Jordan. Oh, Your Majesty. Got some wonderful people now coming out of the Middle East. Yes, what? Uh, there's some more coming? Okay. Everybody, please help make room. Everybody take your seat. Listen. As you know, when Pastor Deborah teaches, we're in the Garden of Eden. And this is for that forever person and your soul. To learn some things. Everybody down? Okay. Today we're going to go more into the new math. The one plus one plus one equals one. That don't add up? Well, not in the natural world. It doesn't add up. But in the realm that's unseen, it does add up. Today, we're just going to talk about the first one, the mental health. Does anybody know what the definition of mental is and what is the definition of health? Uh, yes, okay. Mental means mind, yes. Uh, and emotions, yes. Uh, it's Feelings, yes. And health, what does health mean? How good you feel, yes, yes. Okay, those are some excellent explanations and definitions. When you are learning something that you maybe never learned before, we need definitions and concepts. I usually like to go to Webster's Dictionary. The exact dictionary my son used when he was in the eighth grade because it's pretty good and I read the different and the many definitions and the word mental m-e-n-t-a-l means dealing with the mind dealing with emotions dealing with that realm of your soul that deals with feelings the word health means how good you're feeling, the optimal base of what the mental part of you, of your mind, should be. 
Now the one, the very first one, deals with your physical body. Well, that's where most of your emotions are connected. And they're connected through addition with the other one, your soul. Now I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the second part. The soul, according to Freud, was divided up into two areas. He said there was a normal consciousness that everybody had, even animals have it. And we are all aware of our surroundings. We are aware of people, where we're at. And then there was another part of this called the subconscious. And that one sort of is aware, but he's also the one in charge. Now I'm going to show you a connection you may never thought of. And I'm going to use a couple of examples of people. One, the physical body. It is an organ in itself. The skin is an organ. And it has nerve endings in it, so the skin can feel pleasure or pain. Everybody knows that. Yeah, that's right. Now, within the physical body, there's a system. There's chemicals, there's blood, there's bones, there's muscles. They are all connected to the biological brain that also has chemicals. And it has what we call hormones. So our physical body, which the psychiatrists, my lovely, lovely, lovely people who love the body, study. They know all the hormones, they know all the glands, they know all the chemicals. It's like understanding a car and all of its intricacies and every part of it and what is its best optimum working condition. It's health. Now a psychiatrist, he's looking at the mind, the biological brain. And he's looking at that part to see is there any injuries, tumors, head injuries, uh, any bruising, any leaking of blood, uh, the oil, the whatever is supposed to be there, is it in balance? He knows by his studying in his class or she what the optimal health and the balance of the chemicals should be in a certain range in order for every part of the brain to function. Now I'm going to throw out something you may not ever have thought of. The biological body has five senses. It has eyes that see, take pictures, shoot them back into the brain, to the very back of the brain. And it's stored in what? Electrical chemicals. It has ears and it hears sound sound waves. Have you ever thought what happens to the sound when it gets inside your brain? It actually becomes electrical. You can still see it on oscilloscopes and you can see it when you deal with sound. You can see the waves. You also have taste on your tongue. There's taste buds. And they tell you how what tastes good, what tastes bitter, uh, little babies use their tongue to check things out. It's very sensitive. And they can tell if something is safe, if it's smooth, whatever it is. Okay, so that's eyes, ears, and taste. That's three. And then we have touch. That's four. So our physical body is a touching machine. If you touch it, it feels pain or pleasure. It has nerves. Our hands are used to touch, or our feet, and we can learn about the world by touch. And what is the last sense that we have? We have eyes, we have ears, we have tongue, we have hands, taste. Now, within our tongue are taste buds, and they tell us what's good and not. So we have these sense organs that in the natural world are looking around, exploring, taking pictures, listening to sounds, taking it all in to the biological brain. And in the biological brain, it gets changed. 
to electrical chemical. All your pictures that you see are stored as memories. Your events, the sounds you hear, songs, words, everything's stored in electrical chemical. Now what would happen if you could not hear and you could not see? Would your biological brain be able to function properly? There's a wonderful story about this called Helen Keller, the miracle worker with Anne Bancroft and Patty Duke. What had happened to Helen Keller after, right after the Civil War? Uh, she was six months old and she was just starting to walk and talk and mouth some words and she got a fever. And when she came out of the fever, she was deaf. She could not hear. She was blind. She could not see. So therefore, the brain was, could not receive those signals. So she never learned to talk. So her brain had a mental health issue. It was locked in a darkness because it had no input coming in to teach it, to train it. Now, Helen, if you ever watch the movie, Black and White, excellent movie. She could smell things, her nose, that's another sense. She could smell. She had hands. She knew to put something that smelled into her mouth, but she didn't know. And when those senses were not working right and had been distorted due to a fever, her biological brain had trouble learning. It was locked in the darkness in the prison. And it took uh, her teacher to come along and work with her to break her out of that prison. And Helen went on to college and became an international speaker. She could not see and she could not hear. She learned Braille. She learned how to read Braille. She learned hand signals. But you can see through that movie the problems that a biological fever caused on her and how it took a special teacher and the love of parents who would not pity her to help her out of that prison. Now, another story that many of you, yes, you can get that on YouTube now. Yes, it's there. Wonderful, wonderful story. Okay. Another story, another person, this one's not real, that will help you, is Neo of the Matrix. Neo, unbeknown to him, was trapped in some icky goo, like being in the, the womb. He had all kind of wires hooked up to him that was going to the brain. And he learned later that he lived in a dream world, that pictures and sound were placed into his brain from these computers and these machines to make his mind believe something that was not true. And it took being freed from that system to learn the truth. And when he started learning the truth, oh, it was hard for Neil. But there was another case where if your biological brain that the psychiatrists are working is overcome by trauma, fevers, sicknesses, or from the time that you are born, it is programmed through images and sounds You'll have no truth, and you will not know what is normal. So mental health <clears throat> in the physical body is dependent on the biological brain having input from its senses for, to help it grow. We also have a lot of cases of children that were born out somehow and they ended up with the animals and the animals took care of them they're called feral children I believe they didn't speak any English but they understood the animals uh, Tarzan guy he was one of those and what happens is the biological brain is a learning machine and it needs the right input from all of its senses to have proper mental health and if any one of those five senses is distorted or not coming into the brain, the mental health of the person 
will suffer. So the one, the psychiatrist, he is aware of all that. He is studying that. And he also studies the effects of trauma, fear, the uh, excrement of cortisol, dopamine, serotonin, all the chemicals, all our hormones, the lack of water in your brain, too much or not enough magnesium or zinc, because he knows there's an optimal balance for that brain to work smoothly and healthily. Now, because we define mental health as emotions of the biological brain, those emotions are feelings. Do they, are they based on chemicals? Can be. Are they released when a hormone, fight or flight syndrome, adrenaline, gets released into the body? When you have a, a great fear and you must have sugar and it is released. So are your emotions connected to your biological hormones? Well, how do they know to turn on? How do they know that what you're looking at is fearful? How do you know what fear is inside your brain? How do you know what happiness? Does the brain have feelings? Where is that located in our brain? The psychiatrist knows the part up here called the frontal lobe is where most of our emotions are. They're stored. How? Electrical, chemical. Years ago, when they were having mental health problems, they didn't know how to solve depression, fear, anxiety. So they'd actually do a lobotomy. You can read about this in the NASCA article I wrote, which I'll put up here in a little bit on the podcast and on the webcams. Lobotomy would take some kind of stick, go up your nose, stick it all the way up, get up to the brain. And it would swipe back and forth like this. And it would destroy the frontal co uh, frontal lobe part of a person. They were trying to get rid of anxiety, fear, depression, suicide, crazy stuff. And they knew if they could just get the person not to feel these bad emotions, then the person would be okay. He would have good mental health. But they didn't realize when they did that to the frontal lobe in the brain, they destroyed all feelings. And he couldn't even feel if his hand was cut. He had no life, no, there was no joy, no nothing. But at least he wouldn't be, had to be a, uh, put in a straitjacket and sent to a sanitarium. So that wasn't very nice. Then when mental health was trying to work with some other people who were having problems, they tried the electrical shock. And they do that now sometimes when the chemicals in the brain, sort of like when you have a bad heart and it gets out of sync, they will go in and they will shock it, try to get the electrical rhythm back into its normal pace so it can return back to its normal function. So in mental health, they believed, and some still do today, that if we put electrical current into the brain, and we shoot that through the brain that it will cause the brain to come back into its normal electrical chemical function or it will destroy bad stuff so they tried that so the psychiatrist is working in those areas to try to find out what is causing the mental health problems the disorders, the illnesses, the sicknesses, and how to fix them. Very important part. Because if you had a brain tumor, it could cause you to be very fearful. Uh, the tumors can re suck up blood. They can also release chemicals. They uh, even have animals that can uh, smell that. If you had a head injury, which my son did when he was five years old, got out of bed, hit his head on the side of the toy box, and for eight years, his brain was healing. He was having seizures. And his brain was hurt because they learned through even the football players that when the biological brain is sloshed around inside of the bone, it gets damaged. 
So my son fell out, hit his head, started having seizures. And for eight years, he was on Tegretol. They thought he had ADD, but it didn't. It was the brain was hurt. It was injured. And during that time, he had trouble in school. He was very fearful. Uh, and he had to take Tegretol. We had to take blood work. We had to go get the little things on the head. And after about eight or nine years, the brain healed. But it was a long haul. And I had to work with some neuropsychologists. Uh, I had to work with brain doctors. I had to work with psychiatrists, psychologists. He was on ADD medicine. I thought it was that, but it wasn't. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a long day. Been at the flea market. Had a wonderful time. Uh, his brain was damaged. And it had to heal. So, could you have a head injury? Could you have some type of tumor? The psychiatrist looking at genetics also to find out what is going on and could any of that be a cause of your emotions not being able to be regulated and be healthy. So the biological part that the psychiatrists are working on is very important. And we want it to be the healthiest it can be. We want all our hormones to be working right. Uh, we want all of our senses to be working correctly. And I learned that even the brain, it, with hearing, one of our senses, my dad was quite old and he would take a hearing test. And he could hear the sounds coming in. But his brain was having troubles. It could not understand what the signals were were saying. So you could hear something but not understand it. How many of you look at something but don't understand it? So our senses that we have are a part of this first part, the one, for the biological brain and how it is connected into this part of mental health. So it's real important that you have a good psychiatrist, primary care physician, and you have all of your serotonin and your dopamines and all of your uh, magnesium and your zinc and your B12s and everything within the optimal range that they want it to be in. And you don't have too much salt in your body. You don't have too much, uh, not overweight. All that makes a difference. So that number one is real important, right? Now we have said mental health is your emotions, which can be affected by your biological makeup, chemistry of your brain. Now two, the emotional part. Have any of you ever thought of what fear looks like? Chemical, electrical? What does that look like? How do we look at something? How does our brain interpret fear from that? Anybody got any ideas? Because we feel afraid and scared. Well, where does that come from? Who taught you that? Is this natural to us to feel fear? Is our biological body prepared for that? Anybody? Okay. This is a deep area. This, the emotional, mental part of this. And I don't want to go too much into that. Um, this will not be too long because I have to do another webcam. For the spiritual uh, part of agape love. About kings and kingship. So, the physical body. With the biological brain all of its chemicals and its five senses is connected to our emotions and our mental health. Whatever happens to us, whatever our senses are interpreting, and then our, somehow we tell our, without us even knowing it, we tell our chemicals, our hormones to release things. Somehow in that brain, our biological brain, 
Does it feel afraid? Does it feel anything? Did you know if you put the brain under test, it has no feelings? But it feels. What are emotions? What do they look like when you're afraid or you're happy? What chemicals are going on? What part of your brain is happy? How do we interpret what we see through our senses or feel? Fear, happiness, joy. How do they combine into making us mentally healthy? And that's what I'll talk about on the next Mental Health and the Forever Person webcam. Sit episode three of one plus one plus one equals one. Look at the board, make some notes, and enjoy. I hope to get this up in a few minutes. Everybody sit still. We're going to do another one on something else. If you want to stay, you can. If you want to leave, you may leave. God bless every one of you. Hope you're learning. Please email me. This will be up on the podcast called Mental Health and the Forever Person. It will be on YouTube. Please email me at www.agapelove. Oh, sorry. Pastor Deborah at www. Oh, Pastor Deborah at agapelove is here.org. Check it out. Study. Make notes. Do your own research. Go on out on the internet. Go to books. Read. Study. Begin to learn about yourself and this system and how the biological body and brain have a part in mental health. Why the psychiatrist, our general practitioners, why they are so important to us? Because they're working with the first part, the biological body. All right, see you guys next episode, episode three.